Welcome. So happy to have you here with me today. Uh, today we're talking, Pat, about moving past spiritual stalls. I'm not talking about stalls in the barn, stalls in the marketplace, but when you are on a path and you're stuck, you come to a place where you realize you haven't really progressed or you might even feel like you took a step back. That does happen. So just let's talk about this a little bit because we're spiritual beings and you have the potential to fully embrace your spirituality. We all do. But just like everything else in life, embarking on a spiritual journey is a choice and moving forward is a choice as well. So in life, you're presented with several choices leading to new stages in development. And ideally, most people progress along the same path. But at a certain points, when you have those choices, let me let somebody in the room here real quick. When you have those choices, whether to stay immersed in the status quo of where you are now or explore the splendors of your spiritual journey. So we're going to talk about that a little bit here. Those choices can appear at any time during your life. And the key is staying alert and listening to the wisdom of your heart. When you understand these choices, uh, I think it just makes it so much easier to understand what's going on. And we're going to talk about this uh, seven stages of a spiritual journey, because I think when you feel like you might be stalled, you're not making the progress you want to, very often part of it is that you really do are in one of these stages and you're at the choice point. So the first one is this innocence where we all begin our lives born into the material world. Your life is dominated by the lower three chakras and therefore more lower frequency activities, pursuits. You entered the world, this world in a state of innocence. We all do babies, right? They're, they're so innocent little spirits. And as long as you are healthy and you have a loving family, you live in this world of joy and bliss. You don't, you don't know any better, right? I mean, and isn't that wonderful? You still have a strong connection to the divine because your consciousness has just emerged into this world and your spiritual being is, is very much wide awake. However, for most that memory begins to fade as you're taught how to fit in to the material world, you become distracted by the world around you. And a few manage to maintain their divine connection and enjoy spiritual greatness and progress. It's another word to put it. The stage two is fear and ego. And a lot of people are stuck in this fear and ego. As you grow, your ego, your self emerges and you realize that you're completely at the mercy of all around you. The pure love you have experienced up until now begins to be overshadowed by fear and its corresponding emotions, all very low frequency emotions. You find that if you want to get what you want, you have to please the people you perceive to be in charge. You develop your personality and begin creating all the stories that then shape and define your life. So this is really your childhood we're talking about. Oh, I feel angels like coming in in droves about this. That tells me there's some people out there listening and watching right now who this is going to really be important for you. Stage three is power. In your desire to overcome fear, you can create success in your life and you become educated, you start a family, your career. You want to have control because you think that eliminates fear for you. You accumulate material things to give you a sense of security. And right at that point is your first big choice on your spiritual journey. For many people, further spiritual personal growth ends right there at this stage three, the power. You can choose to continue to be consumed with material desires. You can seek more power and control, but then your life becomes self-centered and you are stuck at stage three. So try not to take this personally, but just as an observation, really take some time to look at yourself. For others, a feeling that there is more to life begins to dawn. And when you have that feeling, you are you are stepping, you are pushing that stage three. You're like taking a step out of it. You're seeing there's a choice. There's something more. And for a lot of people, when they come to me, they'll say, there's got to be something more. I go to work, I get up, I take care of my family and, I, and all of this is good, but there's got to be something more. 
And my heart sings because I know that they're at this first choice. So rather than just continue to accumulate possessions and wealth, you start to look for a deeper meaning to life. And that can happen. It can happen in so many different ways, but this is really the basis of this choice. You begin to awaken spiritually, and then you continue to stage four. Yay, because stage four is about giving. At this stage, you begin to realize there's more to life than what you were doing, the personal power, material gain. You ask, how can I help others? How can I serve the world I'm in? How can I make this a better place, whether it's locally or a world stage? You become comfortable with giving as well as receiving. However, giving can also create a sense of power. At this stage, stage for the giving, it can still be ego-driven. You give because you expect some form of recognition or because it makes you feel good about yourself. So some examples of that would be the, you'll see social media things where they're like, I just gave $400 to this homeless person. And it's great. And thank you for doing that. However, you would step out of this stage. You would take the, the higher road and move to step stage five in your journey where you just to give the $400 to the homeless person and not put it on social media. And I'm not putting down social media. I'm giving you a modern example of how this, this can happen. Another thing is that Let's say you help a family member or a friend, and then you never let them forget about it. That's expecting something. There's strings attached to it. So make sure that if you want to move past stage four, the giving, into stage five, you want to progress, then come to a place where you really think about it. I want to give this, and I, I let go of all ties to it. They can keep it. They can pass it on. They can do whatever they want with it. You don't tell somebody you did it. You just know in your heart you did it and you did it because it felt good and because it's the right thing and you really want to help people. So when you're at the second choice, because now you're there, second choice, you can continue to give from the level of ego, always expecting something in return or pray, even if it's praise. This obviously can have a lot of merit and it can do a lot of good things in the world, but it constricts your full potential in your spiritual growth. That is a place where you can really get stuck in a rut. The opportunity of the second choice is when you begin to give from the place of love and compassion without any concern for recognition or reward. Your giving becomes selfless and your true spiritual journey begins. When you get to this, when you take that choice there of giving from a place of love, you go to stage four and now you're a seeker. This is where things get so exciting on a spiritual journey. It's so worth working through these stages. So let's say stage five, now you begin your regular spiritual practices. So that's where you set up things you do in the morning. Maybe it's prayers, meditation, affirmations. You do some things through the day. You do some things at night. It's things you insert into your day, what we call spiritual practice. The longing for enlightenment grows within, even if you don't have a clear picture of what that means. You want to become better. You want to retire. You want to be a better person than you were before, even if it was just yesterday. Now, at this stage, your decisions start coming mostly from the fourth chakra, which is the heart center, right above, right behind the breastbone. You begin to look for that deeper meaning of things. And that, that is a quest that rarely ends, actually. You try to understand why you're here. You know, people will, will come to me and say, I, I want to know why I chose this, why I'm here, what I'm supposed to do, that whole thing about life purpose is the seeker. You know, if you're looking, oh my goodness, angels again, pushing in. If you are looking for your life purpose or your next purpose, because they can change, then you are a seeker. That's, that's another sign to me. So you want, you want to know why you're here, how you can make your life more meaningful. It's likely you will find teachers, mentors, gurus, spiritual, spiritual leaders, who will help you 
and guide you. You read books, you practice techniques. You're actively pursuing enlightenment in your own, on your own way. You have glimpses of the goal and it encourages you to remain on the path because you see yourself making some progress. You, you can feel it in yourself. You see it. People reflect it back to you and how they comments they say or how they treat you, how they react. So in this place, the stage five, the seeker, the throat chakra opens. That is right here at the base of the throat. And it's because you're starting to express the qualities of the heart in your life. You are talking from a place of love, compassion. You are speaking your truth, but in a kind, compassionate way. Uh, it's wonderful when the throat chakra opens so that you're not stifling your emotions, your thoughts, your opinions. Not that you go out and you be loud and abrasive, but just to speak your truth. And then next, stage six is the sage cosmic consciousness dawns on you. Your mind fully awakens. This is exciting. And uh, angels, again, boy, angels are all over this episode today. And they're actually the ones who told me do this topic. So I shouldn't be surprised, but you become the witness of your actions. And you realize that you are the role player in the multitude of roles you play in this lifetime. And so you realize the control you have over yourself. You stop trying to control other people and situations, but you pay more attention to controlling yourself. The fear of death just dissolves because you realize that life is just another role. Death is just going back home. Simple yogic powers become available to us. However, there's still a separation between the giver and the recipient. And I'm going to talk about that. <clears throat> now, because at this place, you're at the third choice. This is a, a big juncture for you. You've now reached this critical point where your mind is fully awake, but your ego is still present. That darn ego, it really gets in the way. The choice or mistake at this point is to believe that you are something special. You mistakenly think that you've reached the goal and you might promote yourself as such. You know, when people start saying that they're a spiritual leader, uh, they, they call themselves, you know, special like names that are like they're an ascended master. You know, I just, well, no, no offense, but it's a red flag to me and just sort of a sign to me that they're in that stage six and that they have not made the choice to step out of this yet. The end is in sight. I mean, you are so close to the end, but you've allowed your ego to hide it from view and you remain stuck in this false sense of spiritual attainment. So people can reach a certain level. They've studied with people, they've taken classes, they've read books, and they think that's the end. And I'm here to tell you that a spiritual journey is never ending. Not only does it never end in this lifetime, I will be a student till the day I die. That will never stop. I always want to be learning. I always want to have aha moments. I want to have more epiphanies where I'm shown where I was misguided or I had thought I understood, but now I understand better. I want to continue having those. And hopefully you do too. Because you don't want to stay stuck here either. You, you want enlightenment. And it's like you're standing outside the door to enlightenment, but you don't put your hand on the knob because you think you're already there. So the alternative choice here at this point is to recognize the ego, but don't give in to it. Allow it to find its place harmoniously within the whole of who you are. It's one thing to have some confidence in your knowledge and abilities, and another thing to go to a place of ego where you think that makes you better than other people. That's the difference. You continue your journey with humility and devotion. It's about service. It's about connection to God and your angels. It's about being a better person every single day of your life, a little better than you were before about breaking cycles that you've had in this lifetime and probably even previous lifetimes. It's about learning the lessons you came here to learn. So giving at this point is done purely for the sake of giving. If you make the right choice, 
instead of saying what's in it for me, you become, how can I serve? How can I be of help and assistance to whatever the situation is presented to you? Insight and spiritual inspiration begin to grow. You hear the voice of your inner self, your higher self, as your sixth chakra opens. That is your third eye. Oh my goodness, here come the angels again. The third eye right here, just above and between your eyebrows. That is your intuitive chakra, where you get intuition. Uh, it's, it's your third eye, also called the third eye. So that is where if you make the choice to progress to stage seven, your third eye opens. So now you're in spirit. Your heart is now fully awakened. You experience divine and unity consciousness. You're no longer, it's no longer about them and us, you and me, it's we. And it's, it's, it's really hard to even go back to thinking about that you and I, we're all in this together. Humanity is in this together. So there's no giver, no given, no giving, no sense of I or me, just awareness of oneness. That's a, that's a mouthful, awareness of oneness. You still live in the, in the world itself, but you're no longer of the world. And I'm sure you've heard that saying, that's a goal. And the reason it's a goal is because it is this stage seven, this spirit stage where you, you do know what's going on in the world and you're participating, but you also know there's so much more than that. And you keep most of your focus on that. You keep your feet grounded. You want to stay grounded in the world. But that's not all there is. You know, there's so much more. Your spiritual practice is finding pure joy. All your chakras are open. The seven main chakras and the ones that are above your, your crown chakra, the ones that are below your root chakra, they're open. And so your, your, per, your body and your spiritual energy is flowing freely between them through your body. And at this point, you I don't know, this sounds bad, but it's not. You have no choices. And that's a good thing in this instance, because when you reach that seventh stage, you function totally in harmony with nature. Everything is provided exactly as needed at exactly the right moment. You are the totality. So an example of that, I'm just going to tell you how this happens for my business partner and I. We will say things like, we'll mention to each other something like, you know, we want to need somebody to rent that third office in our suite. Let's, the only person we could even think of is such as it was Terry Ann who's with us. And we're like, but Terry Ann's not looking for a place to rent. Two days later, we get a message from Terry Ann that she's looking for a place to rent. Do we know anything? We will, we will say or think to ourselves, you know, I really need like $400 so I can take care of this repair at the house. And we don't put it out there specifically of how it's going to happen and when it's going to come, but it comes and the money comes and always as needed, but it's not all about money. It's about all of your needs. So you just come to this place where you trust that you trust God you trust your angels that you will be provided for. They're, they're not going to drop the ball on you. You didn't come all this way on your spiritual journey to have them go, ah, we're done with you. It doesn't work like that. If anything, the more connected you get with that, the, with your journey, with your spiritual side, the more you receive your needs. So just something to think about. As you progress through these stages, the material world seems very attractive at first. I mean, my goodness, right now, more than ever, I think, because of the social media and because of technology, everyone knows, you know, there's, there's people out there who are billionaires and their lifestyle, you see their houses, you see, and it can trigger some things in people like, I want a lot of money, I want to have that lifestyle. But if you I'm not saying every billionaire is like this, but a lot of times people who are the richest are the ones who are stuck in that stage where it's all about material wealth. But there's people who, are, who want to give away the bulk of their wealth before they pass. That's something different. That is, that is a person who has come to the seventh stage and they realize they've been very blessed. They've, they've accumulated a lot of, of wealth. However, they're giving it away and they want to help and they want to make the world a better place. And they're doing it 
in an intelligent way that is, speaks to their heart, that they see there's need in the world, God bless them. You know, that's fantastic. However, as you're moving forward, I, if you just came into the room, I'm going to go ahead and mute you just to make sure there's no ambient noise. Um, you just start to see this whole material world as being empty and pointless because it kind of, it is, if that's all you have, like there's no spirituality in making a lot of money and having a lot of things. It's nice to have them. Comfort is lovely, but at a certain point, no more of that is going to bring you happiness. You just had a constant pursuit of money and things. So if, if you just keep following this point, and you, you've gone to the, second, the seventh stage, you've progressed this far, it will lead to the experience of the true self and what they call eternal bliss. Because happiness is a state of mind and happiness, true happiness, lasting happiness comes from when you love yourself, you feel that unconditional love for mankind, it feels so good to give. You're not, you're not focused on the things you don't have in life. You're just grateful for what you do have. There is such pure, true happiness in that. There's nothing lacking in the life of a great yogi. They don't feel that anything's been given up. They live a life of poverty, very simplistic, but it's the reverse. The great yogis say that by not following a spiritual path, eternal bliss has been renounced for the sake of a few passing moments of happiness. So it is like passing up on your true spiritual growth to get things. And it, it really is a band-aid on your soul. The material word world is like a dry garden waiting for the knowledge of the divine to make it bloom. In the material world, you only have the energy of the body. On the spiritual path, you tap into divine consciousness, cosmic energy, whatever you want to call it. The material world can be a prison. The spiritual path leads to unbounded freedom. And I know that's like, that's where I want to be. That's exactly where I want to be. And I think I'm just like that close to getting to that point. And it's been a long journey. These are not things that happen quickly. You have to give yourself time and patience because these are big lessons to learn. These are big realizations. They're going to happen when they're meant to happen. You can't make somebody see it. I've, I've tried to explain it and explain it to people who thought that money and belongings were the only thing that were going to make them happy. But if they're not ready to see that, nothing you say or do is going to make a difference. And there again, focus on you and your journey. You have all the control over that. So, um, Another way to look at it is the material world is, is kind of a prison. The spiritual path is that freedom. You're always at a junction in your path. So if you feel like you're stalled, I can almost guarantee you, you're at one of those choices. You're in one of those, those choice moments where you're supposed to make a decision and you're probably overthinking it. This, <laughs> I know I have a bad habit of that. I overthink things and I have to really remind myself to let go and just let things unfold. So truth or illusion, material or eternal, which do you choose? The ego, your, your ego will constantly try to keep that limiting hold on you. And it will encourage you and push you to make choices that'll keep you either in the, the rut you're in, the stage you're in, or even maybe moving backward. So choose wisely. Uh, this is a good time to ask your angels for input for you and get their feedback. And, and if you don't know yet how to do that, you know, hopefully you can watch back on some of my shows and read the book that I wrote, Let Your Angels Lead, that helps you do that because this is why they think it's so important. It is that we're at a critical point right now on our planet where we need as many people as possible to get to stage seven. That's what's going to turn things around. So be regular and disciplined with your spiritual practice. And again, that's the things you do regularly. Get up in the morning, do some yoga, do some meditation. You go for a walk in nature and it's, that's meditative. You say your prayers. I like to start the day with gratitude. You know, what I, the first five things that come to my mind, 
I'm so grateful for a lovely home. I'm grateful for a car that's reliable. I'm grateful for my family and friends. I'm grateful to be able to help people in their spiritual life and connect with angels. You know, whatever it is that comes to your mind, it can change every morning and every night, but say them because it helps you focus on what you already have. And we all have blessings. Everything that you do is a spiritual act if you do it with awareness. Find your path and inner peace. I was talking to a new friend recently and I said, there's something like how much time, I didn't even think I asked this, but it came up, how much time a day do you spend on your spiritual practice? And I'm like, all day. If everything, I mean, not only helping people, but I'm, I'm always thinking like, could I have handled that better? How could I have been kinder, more compassionate? Um, what could I give? How could I give more of my time? Whatever, those things are running through my mind. And when I have choices in front of me, I wanna do the right thing. I want to do the right thing, not only for myself, but for them, you know, for the situation. So everything is a spiritual act when you're in that space. Don't be disheartened if you wander off your path. Don't be disheartened if you've been stuck for a while. Maybe you didn't even know about these seven stages. Maybe you didn't know about those places on your journey where you have choices. Maybe you kind of had it in the back of your mind, but it wasn't just put right out there in front of you. So this is an opportunity for you. It's not about judging yourself or other people. It's about awareness. And now you're aware. And so that's going to be a big thing that helps you because ultimately your spiritual journey becomes your way of life. It's sort of like you have this spiritual lush oasis in the desert of mundane material living. And I like that one of the reasons that I was so happy when my angels told me to move to Sedona and start a business doing this work full time was that I always lived in places where there were a few people I could talk to about my spiritual journey and my experiences, my dreams, but not very many. And so I had to really regulate what I talked about, the subjects I brought up, because you would get these looks like, what? Or, you know, uh, that's weird. In Sedona, not everybody, but proportionately more people are into this They you can talk about it and with a lot more people. And it feels so comfortable to me because I feel like I'm living a more authentic life for me. So here's what I want to, some things I put together for you. I wanted you to be aware of those stages because that's sort of like a little starting point, but let's say you want to be on a spiritual journey and you don't know how to get started. What I'm going to tell you, these steps are also true. If you're stuck, if you're stuck at one of these levels, First thing, I, don't be surprised, connect with your angels and guides. You need to be able to receive their messages, their guidance, the signs and symbols, or you're missing out on such a huge amount of guidance to take you to the next level, to help you with your daily challenges, uh, to give you insight as to your life purpose, your next purpose, all of that. So I, I can't emphasize that enough. And the angels feel like right now is a time in history where it's especially important. They don't, they talk to me about it every single day. So next step, it sounds like, um, it sounds odd, but it's true. Declutter, declutter your workspace, declutter your home. Why is that important? You will know as you start I feel it every time I take a load to the donation, I'll go to Goodwill or different donation centers and just take a car load of things that I've gathered up. And there's always things I'm ready to get rid of, clothing, household items. I want to simplify the more things that you take away from your environment, the freer you feel, the, the energy of your space clears up, it shifts, it's freeing. It feels so good. I've got my daughter doing this now too, like going through and she's got two boys. And so there's four of them. And she says, I don't even know where this stuff comes from. She's not a big shopper, but she finds things like to get rid of and she feels it too. So uh, lots of clients have talked about it. I have to have my office be pretty uh, decluttered for me to be able to focus adequately to do my spiritual work. If there's a lot of things around me, it makes me feel anxious. And, and even people who have no anxiety report that once they declutter, 
that they feel a lot better. To me, it's, I've been doing this 16 years and I'm still finding things to get rid of. So there you go. So um, you're uncluttering your mind too. That's why meditation, just sitting and meditating, however you want to do it, sitting in solitude, trying not to think of anything. I like to just like, you notice the thought and release it. It's okay. A thoughts are going to come to your mind. Just notice them and release them. I like to visualize like you're holding a helium balloon and that thought is the balloon and you consciously let the string go. And that thought just sails off into the sky. It's okay. That's part of meditation. So that gives your mind time to declutter. Allow your thoughts to pass without judgment. Just allow them. They're just a thought. Meditation allows you to relax into what is happening right now at this moment, which is all that really exists. So the next thing would be examine your beliefs. That is a big one, especially because we talked about that, the seven stages, like the innocence and the next one. You're basically, your beliefs are your parents' beliefs, your family's beliefs, and then it becomes your friend's beliefs. And it could even be like a, a mentor's beliefs. What are your beliefs? So really sit down and think about it as, as certain beliefs occur to you. I, it doesn't have to be about your a religion. It can be about anything. What is your belief about the energy you're putting out into the world? What's your belief about giving and receiving? What's your belief about materialism? Be honest. Are your current beliefs supporting your spiritual growth? And so it's a good way to identify belief systems you're still carrying that are definitely limiting your spiritual growth. And it often involves letting go of beliefs we've held for our entire lives. And we realize, I don't believe that. That's just something I've, that's been in my life since I was a young child, but I don't believe that's not my belief. Boom, you're letting it go. But that's the thing about awakening. You have to realize first that you've been sleeping. And until a person gets to that place on their own journey, they're not going to get this. So again, focus on you, take care of you and your journey. It's not selfish. It's practical because you can't make somebody else do it. The next one is expand your mind, explore new ideas. So you've let go of these beliefs, you know, aren't even yours. You don't, you don't subscribe to them. Start reading, find out different beliefs, find out different opinions, stances, figure out what you do believe right now. I think reading books, attending lectures, taking classes, conversations with people who don't have your background, who don't, who aren't exactly like you is really helpful for this kind of growth. And awakening occurs when you've learned something new and you can't get that from hanging around people who are just like you. You have to wake in your mind and your spirit kind of comes out of the slumber that perhaps you didn't even realize you were in. When you expand your mind to allow in these new ideas, beliefs, and possibilities, you increase the opportunity that you're going to wake up to a life experience that you never even knew was possible. That's so beautiful, you can't even fathom it. Another simple one, get outside. I, I actually, <laughs> if you want to say, prescribe this to my clients, you need more outdoor time. And usually the angels will tell me, or I'll see it psychically. There's energy and spirit and healing in the outdoors. So many of us spend our time inside, online, uh, sitting behind computer screens. We're not truly connecting to the world or even other people. So take time to reconnect with nature. Uh, for me, I go to the nearby state park. It's not very far, seven minutes away. I have an annual pass. Every day that I can, I go and I walk around what they call the lagoons, which are small lakes a wonderful riparian, riparian habitat that's just got thousands of birds and it's so wonderful. Water, you know, sunlight sparkling off the water. People are kayaking and fishing and I talk with them and I just feel uplifted. I, the whole time, just fresh air and the breeze and the birds and getting a glimpse of water here in the high desert tundra. It is very uplifting for the spirit. When you do this, try not to have your phone. Don't use your phone. You can have your phone, but don't use your phone. Try not to put on music because what you want to do is really connect with nature. 
Sometimes I will do that walk with my sister. If she's visiting, I would do it with her. But ordinarily, I do this by myself because it is my time to connect with nature. And it is meditative for me. I get ideas that I'm not even trying to have. I just They just come to me when I'm quieting my mind and just existing, just being in that moment. So give yourself the quiet and solitude and the presence that comes with being outside. You could be surprised by what comes alive within you. Another one is take care of yourself. Very often you can focus so hard on, I want to be better. Oh, I'm supposed to learn these skills, but eat healthy, eat healthy food, eat the healthiest food you can afford. Uh, put the time into preparing it yourself. So you know what the ingredients are, reduce like chemically processed foods, uh, things like sodas that are just like a mouthful of chemicals. Uh, you want to stay active. Getting exercise in some way, whatever you can do is fantastic. When you allow your internal systems, which is the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual to get clogged and bogged down, you're tired, you're using unnatural substances. It can be alcohol, drugs, sugar. It's a big one. Um, and chemically processed foods, you block the opportunity for spiritual growth and your eventual awakening. So keep your body and mind clear by feeding it well and move it often. Do what you can, you know, try to intersperse sitting in front of a computer with movement. Prepare to receive the messages that you seek. You're going to get them. Another one is you learn to let go. That was a big one for me. I can remember it was probably the late 80s, early 90s when somebody shared with me, they were passing them around at the psychiatric hospital. It was a sheet of paper and it said, let it go. And it had this whole thing in there about letting go of thoughts, letting go of attachment. And it really like just resonated with me. And I felt angels coming in and I kept, I still have that piece of paper because it really opens my eyes. Like I needed to see that at that time. Here's the thing. You cannot force a spiritual awakening. Anyone can have one and I can help you with the effort, but there's no prescription for it. Do what you can and then let it go. I, I like to talk about divine timing. Things are going to happen when they're meant to. I certainly believe that with connecting with your angels, that when you're meant to, you will feel them. You will see them. You will hear them. You will receive their signs and symbols, not before. You can practice and that's good because you're opening, you're opening, and then boom, one day you're open and you're getting those messages. Same thing with your spiritual journey. If you push too hard, if you try too hard, if you try to think your way through it, instead of letting it unfold, you're getting in your way. So if you're attached to the idea of having a spiritual awakening, you're far less likely to experience that. Know that you are on the perfect path for you. You're right where you're meant to be right now, doing what you're supposed to do. Keep in mind that a spiritual awakening is not necessarily a one-time thing. I, I feel like I have had three big epiphany moments. And at that, I had another spiritual awakening. Again, your spiritual path is not just a lifelong journey. It's a multi-lifelong journey. You're not going to finish it in this lifetime. You know, it's a, it just takes so long to achieve what we call spiritual enlightenment, but it's, it's why we're here. It's what it's all about. So if you're thinking there's got to be something more, there is spiritual enlightenment. The spiritual path is that lifelong and plus journey of growth. And you just keep continuing to follow these steps and you're going to find yourself waking up to new awareness. I, I tell you just a little story. You know, I love to tell stories, but stories, it's, they kind of underscore a point. And the point here is you can't make something happen. I was trying to figure out, okay, my angels want me to move to Sedona. They want me to do my work. But at that point, I was thinking I was in the middle of, of uh, developing my natural mediumship abilities so that I could do that professionally, along with psychic and spiritual mentoring spiritual counseling. And all of a sudden, like, uh, I had an epiphany, like I was at an event that somebody had invited me to, and it was about angels. And she looked at me and she's like, you have the most amazing connection to angels I've ever seen. Have you ever thought about doing that for a living? 
And honestly, I, it, you talk about these epiphany moments, like it wasn't a light bulb that went on over my head, but it was like these rays of light. I feel it like coming at me and coming out of me at the same time. And I feel like I go into this super high frequency and I'm stunned like, oh my gosh, I've seen angels and heard them my whole life. Why has it never occurred to me before that I could help people with this gift? I know I can help them with psychic. I know I can help them with counseling. I can help them with my mediumship. Hello, you can help people with your angelic connection. So you just never know. And, and don't worry. Sometimes people come to me and they're like, well, it's too late for me. You know, I'm in my fifties. I'm like, Hey, I was in my fifties when I had a couple of my big epiphanies about my spiritual journey. And it just propelled me to work harder, to, uh, put more energy into giving and helping people to make up for lost time. And then my angels are laughing now because they're like, there's no such thing as lost time, but that's just my perception None of what I did on my journey was wasted and none of what you have or are doing on your journey is wasted. You've been guided to it. You will be guided to the next level. And so relax about it. Don't get all tense. Anytime you get anxious, tense, fearful, oh, I'm never going to get there. You put, you put that dense energy around yourself and it's hard to rise up to the next level. So just, just think about that because there's so much waiting for you. Uh, it's hard to explain, but I can look back on my life now and see where I was in each of these stages where I had choices. And there were times, let's say, especially, I want to go back and talk about that first choice when you're in power. Um, I was working at the psychiatric hospital. Uh, I had been managing a financial planning firm. Now I was working in a psychiatric hospital and I was progressing and being promoted rapidly. And I felt really important. I felt, Ooh, I thought I must be special, you know, but then I realized, um, first of all, I did, I was not special. Uh, I think it's my frequency that, clients were responding to that people, supervisors, management was responding to. I think they saw and felt my light. That doesn't make me special. That's just me. <laughs> so uh, I needed to break out of that. And on the other side of that is when I started doing readings and helping people and, and helping them with their businesses, their, their personal lives, that felt so rewarding to me. But my my ego side was like, oh no, I'm expected to be in a profession. Everyone in my family is in professional positions. That's what my parents expect. They had such high hope dreams for me growing up of what I was going to do. And they were so proud of me. And it held me back from making the next move for quite a while. Also going back further, maybe you can, maybe you can see a little of yourself in this I was 18 the first time that somebody made it abundantly clear to me about the gifts I had and the potential for them. And it, it frightened me because I had no experience with that. I went to a spiritual circle in Prescott, Arizona, and it was really interesting. But at the end, the guy likes like, you've got nine diamonds around your head. You are a very powerful channel. And he, I was embarrassed. I know I was blushing redder than you can imagine. Uh, I didn't want to be the center of attention like that at all. And then he said, you're supposed to be a channel. You will be a powerful channel. And I didn't even know what it was. This was before computers. So I went and went to the library and looked up channels. And I was like, oh, no, I want nothing. That sounded scary. I never thought about like channeling angels, like, you know, communicating with angels. And had I really understood that, I would have dived into it. But I was 18. That was not my path. I had some dark nights of the soul I needed to experience to prepare me to do my work and do it well. And I hated being in them. It was awful. It was soul killing times in my life, but I don't think I'd be here now if I hadn't been through them. So let your set, let your journey unfold. Now, if you've been stuck for a while, instead of getting stressed about it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this as a blog post. So you'll have the highlights of this on my website, that um, ivoryangelicmedium.com, so that you can go back and reference this because I know it's a lot of information. But I hope if there's even one thing on here that jogs you into moving ahead or getting out of a little spiritual rut you're in, it's all worth it. 
And that's the point you were meant to get. And that's okay. You do not have to absorb every piece of information from every episode of my show or any others. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for you lovely ladies who are joining me here live. Always a pleasure to have you here. And those of you who are listening and watching later, I so appreciate your support of my work that I'm doing. I I pray that you are getting help from it, guidance, and just know that uh, tune in next Sunday. The topic is Archangel Gabriel. That's going to be a really interesting one. God's great messenger. And in the meantime, may your angels surround you. May your angels protect you every moment, every day of your life. I'll see you next week.